So Mary Catherine Ham is here. She's an OutKick columnist. And MK, welcome back here. You were a student of the University of Georgia. And you say you ran this trail every week that you were in college. Just tell us about that. Let's begin there. Yeah, it is, it's a bit of an emotional connection because I can see myself in this person, right? She's a, she's a former University of Georgia Bulldog. Uh, she's running this trail that I ran every single week. I know exactly what it feels like to be there, and it felt safe. It felt safe for a reason because there hasn't been a homicide on campus in about 30 years. Um, and now her family tragically is facing this. The community is facing this. The University of Georgia also uh, had a, another student die by suicide this week. So it's been really hard on the Bulldogs, and my heart is with them and especially with their families. Uh, so, but the fact is that the facts of her case and the suspect who was arrested is more than a political football. We don't want to cheapen it by not talking about this wonderful student whose pictures at, at, at tailgates and, and finishing half marathons. She won't get to live past that. That's this incredible tragedy. I want to honor her life. But the media needs to talk about the facts of the case. And many sources are sort of uh, just leaving out uh, that this person was in the country illegally and did have arrests already on the books in his past inside the country. He crossed illegally. He then says he wants to apply for asylum. He's in New York. He's arrested partly for endangering a child. Yeah. Uh, and then he's released because in New York, you're released very quickly and nothing gets to ICE, right? So look, people have to acknowledge, it, particularly media, whose job it is to use the facts, uh, acknowledge that when you're letting millions and millions of people in, 10,000 per day in some cases, they're unvetted. It doesn't mean that all of those people are going to mit, commit violent crimes, but it does mean that some of them will and that those crimes were preventable. Yeah. This young woman was failed by every level mm -hmm. of law enforcement, including in athens Clark County, which is a sanctuary city, where people, the, the, uh, the DA there promised to treat illegal immigrants with kid gloves. So when someone comes under arrest, what happens after that? And what does that mean for the people in that community and for their safety in the future? Yeah, a couple things I'm gonna get to. Uh, you mentioned this, in some of the early reporting, we knew he was an illegal. And we, we actually had information that he had been arrested in New York, and yet some of these media outlets were still calling him an Athens resident. Uh, here's one headline from the AP. Right. The killing of a nursing student out for a run highlights the fears of solo female athletes. What in the hell is that all about? I mean, this story was wild because I read the whole thing. Uh, first of all, this is a real fear, right? I used to run that path. I, when I run alone, I think about these things. Uh, there's no attempt to contextualize uh, statistics or anything in that piece that might be helpful to female runners. What they, what they do is they take a sample size of two murder, tragic murders of female runners, Lake and Riley and uh, Molly Tibbetts in, uh, in Iowa a couple of years ago in 2018. And then they don't mention that either one of them, the thread that actually connects those two is that both suspects, uh, one serving life sentence, were illegal immigrants. So maybe we should deal with that fact. Perhaps you're missing the story because you're trying to turn it into another story because you don't want to deal with the fact that this reflects badly on the policies that are in place during this administration. But if we do not deal with the policies that are bad in this administration, bad things will continue to happen. Yeah. Uh, another point here. If, if you were to drive, what, 100 miles to the east from Athens, Georgia, you'd hit the South Carolina border, maybe not even that far. And what we saw on Saturday night, um, first of all, here are the border crossings during the Biden years, not a 7.9 million. Uh, and they're not done yet, <laughs> as we know. Eight or nine more months to go, maybe longer if there's a second term, 2.4 under Trump. 50% of those in South Carolina listed immigration as issue number one, MK. Yeah, I mean, it's an issue for a reason. People don't like chaos. Americans are overwhelmingly kind and welcoming, right? Everybody references the poem on the Statue of Liberty. That is part of our national character. It's also part of our national char character and perfectly rational to want people to enforce laws and to want to have some order. Uh, and when people see 10,000 entries a day sometimes and untold numbers that aren't even counted, right? They go, what exactly is happening here? They also look at how differently they're treated. For instance, the fact that in, uh, in New York, they're going to hand out debit cards uh, with untold amounts of money on them at taxpayer expense. People are covering hotels. There are American residents, American mm -hmm. homeless folks who cannot live in these hotels on taxpayer dime, and yet illegal immigrants are allowed to. So people are looking at this and going, exactly what's the deal here? What is my government doing What's its plan? Is it interested in protecting me? And I think that's what many people at the University of Georgia can look around and say, are you interested 
and protecting me. With and that's a, yeah, that with is regard the fundamental to these duty of a government. You're exactly right about that. I'll just make two final points, but we've got to go up. Part of the reason yeah. why you give the debit cards is they don't have jobs, they don't have money. And so it, there will be a small percentage that may act out at a crime. And the reason why you do the debit cards is to try and keep the crime levels down. And if you're going to start with a, a, um, a pilot program now, it's going to go 2x, 5x, 10x before it's all over. Just one quick thing here, okay? We're not painting with a broad brush, all right? New York Post editorial, when so many laws are ignored, how can anyone be surprised when it leads to even more lawlessness? The argument is not that all migrants are bad because of one murder. It's that one murder illustrates how corrupt and broken the system has become. End quote there. Um, it isn't the first time. Hopefully, well, it may not be the last either as we look at this story going forward. Nice to have you on and get your perspective. Yeah, we Thank need to be you. truthful about it. We need to be truthful about it and stop incentivizing the lawlessness. That's where the problem comes. Appreciate you coming on. Mary Catherine Hamm. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.